Hello again. Sorry for some technical issues, but yeah, hopefully it will be fine for now. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna do Snark News Winter Series round four. Today. Yeah, so I guess I have to start soon. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. I guess we can start. Cool. Unfortunately, the light is not perfect, but Hopefully the sound is good and <laughs> there will be no sound during the round anyway, but yeah, and who needs light, right? Just watch the screen, should be fine. So, yeah, almost late. By the way, today I am in uh, Petrozavodsk. Uh, today is the first day of Petrozavodsk training camp. Uh, this is camp for preparing for ICPC. Well, mostly world finals, but not only world finals teams come to Petrozavodsk. A lot of other teams who want to go, come, go to the finals later come here too. Or maybe just for fun, a lot of veteran people, like retired people, <laughs> go here for the weekend and yeah I have this page you can see it I guess yeah uh, yeah so now right now I am in the hotel room but yeah hopefully it will be fine anyway I guess wish me luck and I will start in a couple of minutes. <sighs> what problem will be the easiest? How do you think? Any ideas? Actually, don't tell me, because maybe most of you, well, not most of you, I don't know how many people actually did it. But yeah, maybe you know the answer, so we shouldn't spoil it. Yeah, don't tell. It would be unfair. But actually, you are not forced to tell the truth. You can just tell anything. And then given that you can tell anything, you can say anything. I should not trust you, I guess. Maybe you just want to mislead me. Okay. So. Uh, problem G. Yeah, problem X. Problem X is the hardest one, I'm sure. Anyway.
no results. Hexagonal chest.
Oh. Wow. So bad.
Yes.
Amen.
Not so much time. Sad.
Very by one, but yeah, it was not easy. GG. Uh, thank you. I still feel I'm close on problem E, but it's a bit tough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm close enough. It should be correct. But yeah, you know, a lot of places to make a bug. I have Google Pixel 2 XL if it if it is important from 14th to 1st yeah I guess I guess the contest was not really balanced well right just one person solved problem C and that was the person who just went for for C as the second problem C was easy well, it doesn't look hard, I mean, I mean, camera is frozen, is it? Maybe I'm just sitting in the same position. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit lagging, I see. I have 1.7, I have 1.7% dropped frames. So sometimes it's lagging, I guess. But yeah. Well, C is kind of, I mean, many problems are kind of implementation. Yeah, Ildar. Plus 42. 42 is a good number, I guess. That's a good reason. Uh, yeah. Kevin is close. Yeah, if he had another blind attempt, he would have beaten me, right? Another Devosh had two blind attempts too, but too much penalty. Yeah. Okay, I guess I have to take a break for a couple of minutes and then I'll be back.
Hey, why I write DFS not DFS? Uh, well, I used to write DFS in lowercase, but yeah, by the way, my bank, I can have better vision video now. Uh, yeah, I guess the light was not great. great. Uh, so, I write DFS from uppercase. Uh, I don't know, I actually, I think I looked through Google code style at some point and I saw like something like that in recommendations, but other than that, I don't know, I kind of like it because it's easy to see if something is a function, if it's from uppercase letter, then it should must be a function, if it's not, then it must be a variable. So I guess it is convenient in some case, uh, just to look at the code. Just by looking at the code, you can know if that's true. So, have I seen a missing J in one of the pictures in problem A? <laughs> no, I haven't. What? Sorry. <laughs> oh, so it's JK. It's from A to K. But here it's from A to L because J is missing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but what do you mean by, by you 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 thought it was intentional? But what do you mean? I mean, <laughs> but you have two pictures, right? So I, I guess you have one picture when it's from A to K. The other picture if is from A to L, missing J. But also, uh, the problem statement says from A to K, right? Yeah, so I mean, there are three places, so majority says that it should be from A to K, but yeah, <laughs> sad. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, yeah, also one is missing, right? What about missing one? Well, I guess it's it's easy to guess that should, this should be one, but yeah, two mistakes in this picture. Uh, anyway. <laughs> also this, also there is this picture that shows the starting position. Have any, has anyone played chess on a hexagonal hexagonal board there are three bishops <laughs> and nine pawns but other than that it's the same is it fun but how how do you move with a knight yeah i guess it's obvious right yeah So here a knight has uh, four possible moves. I don't know. Could be fun. So, yeah, once again, I guess I can do it. Oh no. Get back. Okay. Okay. So this one says coach. Right. Okay. Does it answer? Mm. Yeah, coach a little. Uh, Anyway, so yeah, I mean, problem A was just about like you were given two rooks on the hexagonal board, two rook positions actually. No, yeah, two positions on the board, 
the first position contains the rook and the second position is the goal position, the target position. And you want to find a number of ways to reach the first field, yeah, to reach the second field from the first one actually, but it doesn't matter here, in exactly two moves. So this problem doesn't look nice. When I saw the picture, I just skipped it and moved to the other one, but then I guess it was in the Gorian who solved it after nine minutes. So I decided to take a look. And then it doesn't look too scary, but it's just about <coughs> coordinates and uh, yeah, just basically just realize what you have to do. Uh, the board is small, the board is of fixed size, just uh, 91 hexagons. So, what I did was, basically, yeah, so the, ma the main question is how do you, how do you, create a coordinate system, because this one is not actually very convenient. For example, here the lower cells have uh, coordinates A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, H1, I1, J1, K1, but they're placed like uh, not on the same line, so it's not very convenient. So if we just uh, assume that the first X the X coordinates go from A to K in the same fashion. But uh, let's say that Y coordinates, let's say that G1 is not the position of the white king, but let's say that G1 is the cell below the white king. And let's say that H1 is the cell, two cells below the king, the, the knight. And uh, I1 is not the position of the rook, but the cell three cells below. It this those cell, cells do not exist. But I mean, if we just say that the uh, the king is contained in position G2, the knight is contained in position H3, and so on, then uh, it is just more convenient because now we can see that a rook can. Uh, move to all squares of the same x coordinate it's the vertical line to the same to squares of the same y coordinate it's the well diagonal top left to bottom right line so again in this case uh, the cells that the rook can visit are a6 b6 c6 d6 e6 f6 and then g5 it's not convenient, but if we change the coordinates, it will be G6, H6, I6, K6, and, uh, well, J6 and K6. So it's convenient now. So one way is move to the same X coordinate. So it's, yeah, one way is moving to the same Y coordinate. And the third line is uh, moving, adding the same value to X and Y. So it's like moving to, we can move from x, y to x minus 1, y, actually x minus d, y, x plus d, y, where d is, uh, where d is uh, integer, d is greater than 0. We can move to x, y minus d, x, y, y plus d, and x plus d, y plus d, and x minus d, y minus d. And this way it's more convenient. We can now easily check if we can get from one position to another. We just uh, check the position that the positions are not the same. And then we check that their X coordinates are equal or their Y coordinates are equal or their differences between X and, uh, yeah, differences between X and Y are equal. So I can write this way here. It's more understandable. And then, yeah, so here's how I transform the coordinates. If I have a x, y like cell on the board, I transform it to x and I add something to y, depending on x. And yeah, I just try all possible cells as the intermediate points. 
and I check if I can go from the starting position to that point and from that position to the second, to the finishing point. So it's kind of implementation, but yeah, the question is how do you implement it? And I think this way is the easiest to, to do. Anyway, that was problem A. Problem B was another implementation problem. This contest is pretty implementation uh, oriented. Yeah. So this problem, in this problem we were given, like we, we are just like we have a format of uh, compressing integers described in the problem statement. For example, integer 111 is described as 31. It means that we have a group of three ones. Integer 2020 is described as 12101210. It means that we have one group of two, one group of zero, one group of two, and one group of zero. And integer 222233 is uh, four twos, two threes, right? And we are given two integers in this form, and we have to add them up. We have to add them and output the result in the same format. Should we actually... There's no way to, to report it here, instead. Anyway, so the problem, the only problem was that the uh, sizes of groups was were too large. We had, uh, we could have at most uh, ten to the power of eighteen digits in each integer. So that's too much, too much, too much, too many, I guess. And but that's not really. I mean, that that's a problem. So we cannot just uh, write down the integers and then add them and then just transform it to the initial form. What you can just add them in this format. So what we do is we just uh, take the, well, this is not 11. Okay, let's refresh. We take the last groups in both numbers. Here we have 1, 1, and here we have 9, 9. Uh, and uh, we just take the smaller of these groups. And for the length of the smaller of these groups, we have the same digit in both integers. So basically, the value of summation will be the same in uh, each digit, in each position. But it's not exactly the same because we can have carries from the previous position. That's how we just add numbers, right? So this is just what I did. I had, uh, so I input the integers. I reverse the list so that I go from right to left. It's just more, more convenient. And then, uh, I have two pointers. The first pointer pointers to the next group, like non-empty group in the first integer, and the second pointer correspondingly corresponding to the same to the second integer. Then C and T is the like the size, the common length of the groups is just the minimum of uh, the remaining lengths. First is the length of the group, and second is the digit. It would be more convenient to rename them, say, len and digit. So just uh, addressing them first and second costed me a couple of minutes, I think, because I made some bugs in this. Yeah, I should have done, like, should have created a, a structure of length and digit. I guess it would be better in this case. So yeah, anyway, uh, C and T is the number of digits. Uh, the number of digits, like the number of positions where we have the same digit in both numbers, and val is their sum. And then we have carry from the previous digit, and first we have one position which is equal to uh, value plus carry, module 10. And then, depending on whether value plus carry was no more than 9 or greater than one, 9, we either have carry on or not, but uh, we have, it's the same for all the remaining digits. If we have a carry at some point, we will have a carry in all the remaining positions in this group. And if we don't, then, yeah, we don't. 
So just uh, we have a group of one digit equal to just value plus the old carry. And then we'll have a group of CNT minus one digits of value either value modulo 10 or value plus one modulo 10. And then we decide the next carry. And then we have uh, processed CNT digits in both groups. So we subtract that. And if we have an empty group now, we just uh, move the pointer forward. And in the end, I compress the integers because I could have the same groups, the groups of the same digit uh, neighboring in my representation. So I compress them into groups of the same length. Yeah. So something like that. So it's kind of implementation, just do what, what's said here. But yeah. Just be a bit clever and yeah. So another problem was problem F. In problem F, uh, we had uh, Problem F was another implementation problem, I have to say. But anyway, I mean, <laughs> there are good things in practice implementation. Is everything freeze? Is it? Hopefully not. So I guess it's easy, I don't know. You just have to, I am dropping frames, okay. Yeah, that's true. I have 8.4, can I just? Yeah, maybe this way. Or this way. Okay, let's try this way. But yeah, I see, I see. I, I am dropping some frames. 8%. That's not good. Anyway. So in problem F, we had uh, a map, a map of uh, cells. Each cell could contain an empty table, a road, a city, a field, or a chip of one of five colors. And uh, if we have several cells of uh, sharps, of cities, that are connected, that have a common side, then if you have two cells, two city cells that share a side, then uh, the cells form the same uh, city. So basically we need connected components of cities, of city cells, they will form cities. And uh, also we need the connected component of fields and uh, it's given that chips are placed in the field, so the fields are the dots and all the colorful chip cells. And we need connected components of uh, of fields, of field cells, that they will form fields. Uh, hey, this is my fourth stream. As can as, as can be guessed from the title, I am solving Snark News Winter Series 2020 round four today. The series consists of five rounds, so I guess this should be the f <laughs> like the next stream could be the last like the next stream will be the last of this series for sure. And I don't have any plans to make future streams after that one, but. I could make one, or maybe I, I will do one before the next one from Pedro Zavodsk, where I am now. 
but I'm not sure what the content will be. The fifth round, the fifth round ends on the sixth of February, so it's an how many? Oh, that's a lot actually. It's nine days from now. So maybe I could have another stream in the middle. We'll see. So, yeah, so we need connected components of cities and fields, and then for each field, we get some, each player gets some points. And uh, who gets the points for field? The player who has the most chips in that field have receives points, and if several play, players have equal, like the same number of chips, all these players get points. And how many points you get is uh, three points for each object of the city type, so for each like city component, which touches this field. And the question is who gets the most points. So uh, the solution is based on uh, BFS, or you could use DFS as well. Um, hopefully, yeah, if you don't know what that is, then look it up. I guess it's actually, yeah, it, I guess it's also called flat fill sometimes, but anyway, so that's what you use to find connected components. I won't go into detail here, it's just the standard code, and then the question is how do we, like it's easy to, 10%, anyway, it's easy to find the connected components. The question is how do we find how many city components touch our field? And uh, I guess you can use some kind of a set, just use a set and mark all, all those components that touch, basically, uh, from each field cell in this BFS, if we can go to a city cell, then we have to add the component of that cell. And if this cell is uh, like, yeah. So instead of a set here, I use uh, just an array mark, which uh, describes which components I have already counted because if a field touches a city in two, like possible ways, I have to only count the city once. So this is kind of a boolean array, which says if I have already accounted for this component, but this is a boolean array without, uh, with integers instead of boolean. And uh, this is just a trick that is used for not, uh, up not filling the array again with zeros. I have an integer t, which stands for the current component of fields, like the current version of this array. And whatever is equal to t, if a cell is equal to t, then it's true. And if it's not equal to t, then it's false. And uh, then uh, not equal to t means if it is false, then uh, I set it to true. And then when I, when I make plus plus t, it means that I fill the array with all false elements again. It's just a small trick that is useful, that can be useful sometimes, but I guess you don't have to use it actually here, just do whatever. Anyway, I will not go through this code in detail because it's not very interesting. And yeah, the next problem was problem D. Oh, uh, that was bad. I mean, I wrote a solution. I implement the solution and it was too slow, but then I just realized I don't ha I didn't have to implement all that stuff. I, I just, yeah. I mean, I, I implemented, well, some stuff, find the generator and so on, but I didn't need that. Uh, maybe it's too slow, but maybe, I, uh, is it possible to optimize it? So can it be fast enough for to, 100,000 queries for five seconds and two billion prime. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Anyway, so the problem was uh, we are given a prime integer p, a prime, and then we have uh, a goal, a non-negative integer g, and a set of tools, non-negative integers ti. Actually, it seems that this problem statement is, is really readable in uh, using translate. I think that it's it's not bad. Is it? Can, can you understand it easily? I mean, it looks quite easy to understand. So word order is a bit off sometimes, but otherwise it it looks pretty good, I think. Can I stream educational code for round tomorrow? Well, I guess not. Because it's rated, right? If it was not rated, then maybe. Even though it could be a bad idea, but... I guess it could be re reasonable. But I cannot just stream doing it live. Because, yeah, people could cheat. Yeah, so I had some tools, ti, and then instead of integer x, I could write x multiply x times ti. And I wanted to make, yeah, basically, I, I, I can assume that I take it modular p every time. And then I want the number to be equal to g eventually. And the question is whether I can do it in a finite number of moves. Well, obviously, I don't, I never need an infinite number of moves anyway. But yeah. So I'm given several games. I'm given several games that the player must play. And yeah, there's like several test cases. And in each test case, I have some TI tools. And the question is whether I can pick some of these integers. Well, maybe I could pick each integer zero or more times, multiply it that number of times multiply all those numbers I get, and I want to get g. And the question is whether I can do it. So if g is 0, then uh, I can only get a 0 by multiplying with 0. So here I just find uh, whether I have a 0 in input. And if the goal is zero, I just check if I have a zero. That's an easy case. And then a harder case was that when I don't have a zero and don't, don't well, when I, well I, when I don't need a zero. And uh, what wh one way, you, one thing you could do is find the generator, modular p. So, uh, generator, so it's an integer g such that g to the power of 0, g to the power of 1, and so on, g to the power of p minus 2, are all distinct integers, 1 to p minus 1 in some order, and uh, g is equal to 1, Modular g to the power of p minus 1 is equal to 1 modular p is uh, Fermat's little theorem. So obviously g to the power of 0 is also equal to, to 1. Um, so yeah, basically the question is whether uh, this number g in all powers gives all distinct integers uh, modular p. And uh, one thing is that you can easily find the generator. Just try many numbers again. I mean, uh, there are a lot of generators of the order of uh, phi of phi of n, I guess. So I mean, yeah, that's. I guess if I go into details here, I just have to make a full-blown uh, algebra class. But, yeah. 
I'm definitely not prepared for that. But yeah, if we don't if I don't go into details too much, then uh, I can find the generator by just trying integers two, three, four, and so on. And then the question is how I check if an integer is a generator. And then it turns out that I only have to check uh, if uh, g to the power of d is not equal to 1 for all d divisors of p. So this is equivalent to, yeah, for all d less than p and modular p here. This is equivalent to g is generator. Uh, p minus 1 and p minus 1 here. Yeah, divisors of p are just 1 and p because p is prime. The divisors of p minus 1 could be different. Yeah, so that's how I can check it actually. And then it also turns out I can only check those divisors who have only one prime in their factorization that is different from p minus 1. That is just one thing you can do to optimize it, but we don't need it now here anyway. So, but this is not needed in this problem. Even though I tried to implement something like that. And what is needed is some kind of finding the logarithm of integer, uh, but that's not needed too. I mean, what is logarithm? I mean, yeah, I guess I, can, I have to describe my original approach and then uh, I just, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure, yeah. Can I describe it in detail? <laughs> Anyone interested? I guess I have to think. My log x function returns phi p divided by order of x. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, order or, order is a nice word, I guess. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I guess I can describe the approach kind of in an easy way here. Yeah, okay. So, well, phi of p is equal to p minus 1, obviously, so... Because p is prime, and then... Uh, order of x is the smallest integer k such that x to the power of k is equal to 1 modulo p in this case. And then uh, it means that uh, I have k distinct integers among x to the power of 0 and so on, x to the power of k minus 1. So I can make all these integers here. Let's say I have two integers, x and y. Yeah, okay, so the first question is how do I find all order? So actually, log function returns uh, p minus 1 divided by order of x here. But then, uh, what is order of x, y? Uh, let's say that this is the, like, this is also... Uh, equivalent to how many distinct integers I have among powers of x. And then let's say that order x, y is how many distinct integers I have amongst, 
among uh, powers of x times powers of y and uh, then uh, it turns out that this is equal to least common multiple of order of x and order of y. Is it true? I guess it's true. So if this is true, then it can also be shown that if I have a lot of integers, then their order is LCM of orders of individual ones. And then uh, if I have some integer goal, uh, can we get goal? This is actually equivalent to just asking if uh, just asking this question. If order of all x's is this doesn't change when we add goal to it, then uh, obviously we can we have goal there. We we can build goal just from integers x1, x2, xn. And if uh, this is not the same order, then it means that when we added goal, it brought something new to the set of integers we can get. And uh, yeah, if this is equal, then 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 uh, output true. Else output false. Yeah, I guess it's it's correct. That's the solution, kind of. And then uh, to find the order, what we do is we again, we, we can actually just try all possible divisors of p minus 1 and check when we get 1. And also it turns out that we don't have to check all divisors. We can just go like trying to remove some divisors from p minus 1. And so if we can divide y by d, which is some prime, dividing it and, uh, yeah, dividing it initially, dividing p minus 1, and uh, the power is 1, then we can remove this factor. So we just remove all factors we get. And then at this point, y is equal to order of x, I suppose. Yeah, basically that's kind of it. But I went for a harder way. Okay, enough talking, I suppose. So we discussed the four easier problems. And then two harder problems were, well, C was geometry. And uh, as far as I can tell, it's like, it's usual that round four contains geometry, I guess. It's something that the organizer, <laughs> Snark News, or just Snark, always does. He always uh, makes round four contain geometry, but no one knows about them. I guess I know about that now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, okay, so I know it's geometry, but is it hard? Maybe it's easy, but... So we have to... Yeah, just use a ray, a beam, and simulate the process. So, yeah. Your task is to simulate the process. That's, that's what tells the most about the problem. Because, I mean, yeah, it, it's not easy. Because I guess the question is if you need enough precision. So there was one person who solved it. Maybe he's already gone. But, yeah, how to avoid precision issues? That, that's a good question, because I, I don't know either for now. It's actually, the constraints are kind of ridiculous. We have coordinates up to a billion, given with four digits after the decimal point. So we have like 13 digits of coordinates, 13 digits. That, that I mean, 
do you have to use Python here? Because, but now, like, how do you even use Python? You have to stay in integers, right? If you just simulate the process by, uh, well, trying to go to the next, you don't know about precision issues. Okay, so what did you do? I mean, did you just simulate the process as given in the problem statement? You just emit a beam, you find where it uh, bounces from a wall and then just reflect the beam. Is it what you do? I mean, one, one nice way of uh, ho like handling such problems is, let's say we have, uh, let's say we have a ball here which goes here and then goes here and then goes here and so on. Just reflect it, okay. This segment. Yeah, so not one nice way is if you reflect the starting point in this case uh, with regard to the side of the first reflection, then uh, it will be the red point here in this case. And uh, if we just reflect the starting point from the blue one to the red one, then the first segment becomes a well, straight line here. So if we just started from the red, red point and ignore the first segment, let's say that we enter here, then we just have one uh, less reflection, one reflection less. So the red balls moves in the same way as the blue balls does. And then we can also uh, reflect the red point with respect to the next side, which is this one. And if you reflect the red point, we'll get a blue, a uh, green point somewhere, well, higher than where I can draw it. But I guess, yeah, so now we have one more, less refraction, but I'm not sure if it makes the problem easier. Maybe not. Uh, so. I'm sorry, I did not solve the problem you sent me last stream. Uh, I didn't have time to think about it. So, maybe. I mean, I have the link, link uh, saved. So, maybe I'll try to solve it later. But for now, uh, not now, anyway. Yeah, so this is kind of simulation. And then problem E is maybe interesting, but my implementation is a bit hard. So we have a game, we have two players. Uh, one starts in vertex A, the other starts in vertex B. Uh, there's some translation issue, so there's vertex B. And then participants makes move, make moves in turn. Each participant moves to a vertex which has not been visited yet and uh, yeah the one who cannot make a move lose, loses so basically the participant takes the vertex to himself but it doesn't matter yes indeed problem e is dp question is what kind of DP and yeah I mean it's not like you if you know the word DP or if you know the concept of DP you just solve all problems about DP it's not like that it's not just a name programming if you know that it's a name programming then it's easy it's not like that no anyway so the question is how many different pairs of vertices we have so that if the first player starts from A and the second player starts from B, then the first player wins, if both players play correctly. So, 
Yeah. So what I tried to, actually, yeah, so my first approach was incorrect again, uh, because, I don't know, I just, I just didn't understand something <laughs> about the problem. Uh, but basically, my approach is DP on, uh, uh, let's say we have some tree. And yeah, draw in paint is hard, is hard. Yeah, so the the programming state is who wins if the first pro player uh, stands at the red vertex and uh, came by the red edge. So the last move of the first player was using the red edge. And let's say that the second player stands in the blue vertex and the last move came from the blue edge. So the question is if you have the state is the, a pair of edges basically or if this is the first turn of a participant then uh, this is not an edge, the edge, there's just a vertex, but still you have a linear number of like states for one person, and then then in programming is we have to vertices, red and blue, and uh, we know what edges were the last used for both players. And the question is if uh, the first player moves in this situation, who wins? And what could be the move here? Basically, the red player has to, well, I mean, the turn of red player is just to use some of the edges. So uh, the red player could go below using the orange edge or above using the orange, the second orange edge. So, but the question is where to move. There are two cases, but in fact, only one of these cases here is like makes a valid DP state because if the first player moves to the top, to the root of the tree, then it's fine. Then the new state will be just this edge. But if the first player goes below, goes to the to its child here then uh, we cannot just proceed with this state, this DP state, because the second player, like our, the second player cannot go to the red vertex, right? Because it was already visited. But our DP doesn't know about that. Our DP state does not describe which vertices were already visited. So basically, if uh, the red edge, the blue edge, both the red edge and the blue edge are directed towards the pass from the red to the blue vertex, then uh, this is the valid DP state. So basically, both players came from different sides. One came like using the red pass, the other came using the blue pass, and now they can still, like they're still facing each other. So if two vertices are still facing each other, like two passes are still facing each other, then our DP state is like sufficient. We know that we just cannot go to these vertices, and we don't need to know about the other vertices. But if a player goes, like, not, not doesn't go toward the other player, but goes to a different direction, we just have to, like, stop the DP here, because what we actually need to do is just find the longest path where one player can go and the second player can go, because it is not important for us now how the players interact. They do not interact, in fact. They just use the longest pass they can use. So if the first player uses the orange edge, the question becomes, uh, what is the longest pass here? Longest, we need the longest pass down here.
and uh, for the blue player we need just uh, well I don't know from from blue vertex not uh, visiting blue edge neither blue edge nor red vertex so we just find two paths one pass from the red vertex the longest one and then the longest pass from the blue vertex and if the red pass is longer then the first player can win here and otherwise the first player cannot win why does that work because well the first player who cannot make a move loses so if one player can make more moves than the other one then the first that player wins who can make the more more moves that's the one who wins uh, yeah so i mean that's like the transitions in our dp but the question is how do i how do i make no bugs here i guess i have to debug it now and get it accepted at least because it's sad not to make it accepted so for now it doesn't work on the second example test case maybe i'll take a look at this and if it doesn't pass then i just realize my approach is incorrect we'll see so we have a tree with six edge six vertices and okay five edges just a chain graph chain tree what is the answer here it's four is it four it looks like four to me okay what about this it's six here is it six in this case so right now i'm just trying to find the smallest test case that doesn't work for my solution so it's, so to make it as easy to debug as possible Yeah, I think in this case the answer should be two. No. Not two. Uh, four. I think it should be four. Let's see what pairs of vertices I. I consider winning. Yeah, sure. Running two BFS at the same time and make DP on them. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, that could be an easier implementation. I agree. But I kind of want to find what is wrong with my solution I think so I would prefer uh, fixing it because I think it should be correct at least so Yeah, I'd say that my pass lengths are incorrect here. But why? No, maybe it's good.
um, let's output all green positions. But with edges too. Why so many? No. That's not good. So zero two. If I go to so two minus one one zero is it? A winning position. Two, one, one, zero. Two minus one, one zero. Oh, it's losing. But it's not losing. It should be winning. Down is correct, hit is incorrect. For real, okay. Okay, <laughs> I guess. No, but why is down correct then? Down is the pass from me. From this vertex. This one, that's correct. But then the pass from the other vertex. is one two This is one if we go into Oof. one, two, zero. I was writing this is such a rush. I mean I had just five minutes left, but, well, I don't know.
about five minutes, but I mean, I, I was trying to implement it as fast as possible, but now I can't really understand it. That's, yeah, that's not very good. Anyway, um, Oh, okay, okay. I guess I see. I guess it should be like this. No. No. It's even more incorrect. Why? Yeah, so his pass are not completed sound correctly. So should I just put something again? This is correct. Why I have SVY and SVX? Because, well, X and Y are the state numbers, and the state has SV and SP. SV is the vertex number, and SP is the like previous vertex, the one from where we get the edge. It would be faster if I just wrote it in five more minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure. It could be. It could be. Mm, in line with rival his. No, it's two one, right? Yes, this is zero. This is zero. That's not good. Okay, I know. Okay. I guess this way. We are back to six, but it should be two. As far as I can tell. No, it should be four. Yeah. So zero two is not winning. 
because we go to one and the opponent goes to three. I'm not sure it's about one character, it could be more. Just some logical, I, I, I think it should be some, well, it could be some X instead of Y easily, but I feel like it could be something logical as well, just some logical bug here. Okay, so zero two is not winning. Why do I think it is it is winning? Well, down is zero and his is one. That is correct. And then I go to a state. Yeah, so I go to this state again. Right. And in this state. Okay, so in this state, his is not correct. What am I writing? Should it actually be SP Y? But why? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, yeah, why, right? Yeah, so maybe here should just be X then. Because it should be passed down. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I've mixed these two up. Okay, it's four now, it's 12. Okay, sure has to be correct. No way it's incorrect. Um. Oh well, 10 seconds. Okay, wrong answer test case 7, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> what should I do? looks correct well mistake yeah my mistake was in this in these lines in fact I guess so this one was SPX should be SPY and here it should be vice versa I suppose yeah I think so so I changed this too but it's not, it was not the only mistake turns out I still have to fix the biggest mistake. And what's that? This looks correct. What can I even do? Just try some small cases. I guess. Zero, one, two, three, four. One zero is winning. One three is winning. One four is winning. One two is not. And zero anything is not winning, right? What's one one two? It's not a test case. Two one two is zero. That's an example test case. So, one three is winning, one four is winning, two zero is winning, two three, two four. Okay. Kind of looks correct. Oh. Yeah, that's 
the same tree. I think there is no long long needed. The answer is just n square. It's not that much, right? Okay. Should implement some kind of brute force solution, but it's a bit hard. In the TCO finals last year, I implemented a brute force solution, but for the medium problem. But I took my, like two, twice more time than implementing the correct solution, and that wasn't expected. Yeah, couldn't be something stupid. I, I, I wouldn't expect that. That's easily expected. But, well, the small cases work, I think. At least for now. At least this small. What overflow? Nothing. There's nothing to overflow here. Only int. Mm. Any suggestions? How how do people debug? No idea. I have no idea. Yeah, stress testing, show all numbers from 1 to n. I could make a big test case, but it's just, I won't make any won't understand anything from the answer, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit lazy to do stress testing, but I guess I have to. Stupid CPP time. We I, we didn't have any stupid CPPs during the contest, but now we'll have one here, at least after the contest. Should we have an emote with stupid CPP? much view report test case 7 all test cases are 3 milliseconds so it's so it's likely a small test case but stupid CPP I mean it's just a stupid solution not clear, I mean. Uh, 
I should go in the other direction. So in this case, the state is the mask of visited vertices. Uh, I need just one mask. And two vertices. Both should be contained. Something like that. So it's actually not super. What? Okay. This one is initialized with some random stuff. But I'm lazy to initialize it in a usual way. So here we go. No. What's wrong? Okay. Maybe this way? No. <laughs> it's hard to write stupid solutions. I just can't do that. Yeah, this is six. This is correct. 42. Why 42? What's that number? Oh. No, it's not P1 here, it's U here, okay. Um. Okay. But I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. What's wrong? Um. Okay, I see. <coughs> I was moving to any vertex, but I just have to move to a neighbor. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. some easy stuff. Why so slow?
Okay. So in this test case of nine vertices, my output is 35 and the correct one is 34. You see? Mm. That's not good. Can I have a smaller one, please? Let's just have six vertices, maybe? Any chance? There are not many different trees of six vertices. Okay, seven. No? Maybe at least eight? Yeah, eight vertices. 26, 27. Okay. Uh, well, well, well. Okay, so I have one more in the minutes. These are the pairs I have. And these are the pairs my other solution has. Uh, so the only incorrect pair is which one? <laughs> three two. So I have pair three two here. And I think I win on this pair. But actually I do not. Yeah I do not. That's correct. But then it means that if I go to vertex 1, no, 2 minus 1, um, uh, 1, 3, It works. Stupid CPP always works. Um, I can have two and he can have two. That's actually not true. He can have only one here. Um, Two, one. Right now, one, two. Why is it two? Oh, it is two. Okay, I see. Okay, so that's the problem I was. Yeah. Okay, so what I actually should do here is uh, if r is equal to u, you no, know, if v is not equal to r, then only then do this. Because, yeah, so in this case, the path from vertex 2 is counted, but it should, it should not. Or shouldn't it? What do I want to say by that? What? Is I'm no. Hmm. 
No. I don't care. I will dance. No, that's not the correct fix. I suppose. What's the correct one? When the root is one, the longest path that so F one is the longest path that goes from one somewhere below, like to, to its children and to their children, and that avoids two. Okay? Okay. I see. When I am here, how come? No, it's not possible. Is she a correct fix? Okay, I mean, it could be a correct fix, but I just I'm just not sure it's helpful. I mean, it does fix it, but you know, anyway, what about that test case? Okay, I have 34 now, that's correct. At least. Um, let's try some larger test cases then. Maybe 15 vertices. Well, we get some answers. Okay. Let's yeah, it looks like magic, I guess. But yeah. Okay, so here are my pictures. This is what I, yeah, Peter in the name of the hotel. So this is what I drew on my paper today some some trees and that's yeah that, that that's the test case which failed yeah yeah anyway it's running but i have 10 test actually 10 seconds and 2000 it's it's a bit surprising the solution is like n square right N square for 2000 is 4 million. 4 million is a small number, but the constant is actually huge. So that's not super surprising. Eh, I guess it should be correct now. So I guess I'll wrap it up then if it does pass. I'm not going to solve problem C. I, I mean, I don't know how to solve it. I, I, I just know how to implement a simple solution. But the, the problem is, for example, if the beam hits exactly where two mirrors meet, it is absorbed entirely. But how do I know if it like hits the point exactly? It, it, that can only be done if you on if you make all calculations in integers. Right, because if you use doubles, just use an epsilon, I mean, it could work, but when you are given coordinates with 13 digits precision, it's hard to do anything. You just have to go into huge integers, but 
also in this case, I don't know how to like, if you want to reflect a point, then it will go to int, not into non-integer point, right? So yeah. Great, best. 6.5 seconds out of 10. Actually, not, not very fast. I guess I was a bit lucky, but yeah, I don't know. I guess the time limit was generous enough so that whatever n square you write, it will be correct. I have a lot of like n square arrays here. So yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, my debugging looked a bit like magic, but anyway. Writing code in a hurry is not very good. I mean, e even on the usual contest, I think I would spend more. If I had if I just had more time, I would still try to implement it much clear, much more clearly. Anyway, so. So we can write that problem e is solved. So we have five problems. But I spent so much time after the contest action. So yeah, I guess I wasn't close to solving during the contest. Anyway, so thanks for watching. I, as I said, the next stream is planned, as you can see below the stream. And well, one of the next streams is at least planned on the 6th of February for the fifth round of this series, for the fifth and the final round of this series. And yeah, be sure to watch. If you enjoy it, follow if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and well, maybe learn something. Bye bye. Yeah. Hello, one two eight P. Sorry. You can watch the stream in replay. Thanks. Bye.